Well, what is going on YouTube? How's everybody doing today? It's nice to have you here. Thank you for joining me. I have got a new Kershaw on the table. I know I've had a lot of Kershaws lately, but they've, for some reason, I found myself interested in the older stuff that I've had again, and then they dropped these new Duralock knives, and I just got on board. If you've been following the channel, you saw my review of the Heist. This is a fantastic pocket knife. Now, I do have a couple of the others of their Duralocks that you'll be seeing reviews on down the road. Uh, they're, they're good. They're just not as interesting as these two. Um, this is the Iridium. And you can see these definitely share some DNA, particularly in the blade shape, the way they've done this swedge, All right, the overall look. Both of these are fantastic knives. They just are. Uh, they offer some different things. We'll put this one away for now. The Iridium is marvelous. It's D2, right? It's running on bearings. It's got aluminum scales. It's got this sort of kind of coppery backspacer that they'd like to do. It's got a reversible deep carry pocket clip. It's got a relatively plain but just interesting pivot just the same. And the action is fantastic. Now, there are steel liners on the inside of these aluminum scales, which is well done. It's a relatively simple build. It's got a couple of screws here, you know, here and here. It's got a little bit of jimping at the base of the blade right here. This is very pokey in its design, right? Very comfortable in hand. You guys know I love this sort of neutral handle shape, and that's absolutely what this is. It's got a big lanyard spot back here if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not, but you know, whatever. It's not in the way, and it's not like obtrusive. It's just there in case you want such a thing. It's got a little choil right here for a natural finger spot. Now, the one thing I will say about this knife and its brother here is that there's an awful lot of room between here and here, here and here. So you are held sort of far back from the blade. Um, I mean, that's true. Um, it's a little less true. See on the bug out, the way this comes to a more of a point right here? You're just not so far away. Now, there is a flat here. If you really wanted to, you could come forward like this, but you're going to want to be very careful because I will say Kershaw has managed to sell some very sharp knives here. So you want to be careful if you're doing that, but you can do it. I just don't um, recommend it because you could get yourself sliced up. Blade shape, as I said, is one of my favorite things to come out of Kershaw in a really long time. Um, it's almost a spear point. It's a drop point, but the way they've done it, it looks almost spear point. It's got this lovely flat and then great belly. Uh, it's got a great edge on it. It's a reasonably thin slice of their D2. Now, I know I can hear you out there, but D2 is old. and it's, it, it, Look, Kershaw moving away from HCR is my favorite thing in the world. Do I wish that they were making these knives in the same blade steel that they made their launch series out of, that 154CM, yeah, I really do. But I'll take what I can get. And I like Kershaw. <laughs> I just do. Uh, these are about 65 bucks, <clears throat> which is not inexpensive for a Kershaw, but I don't know. I mean, I ordered this one from Blue Creek Knives. I will put a link in the description as well as a link to this knife through them if you're interested. Um, they were sold out when I looked recently, but they have most of this stuff. And the folks at Blue Creek are really good about updating when they get replacement stuff in. For $65, this is a lot of knife. It's just really well sorted. And their version of the bar lock, the Dura lock, is smooth and it's just really good. It's, <laughs> it really is. All right, let's get some specs out of the way. Uh, let's see, you're looking at a little over uh, three and a quarter inches of cutting on three and a half inches of Kershaw's D2 grip area from behind that swell. You're looking at three and just about three quarters inches. So there's plenty of room on this knife, even if you've got bigger mitts. Length overall is just shy of eight inches. We're going to call it seven... Yeah, seven and seven eighths, seven and six eighths. It's right there. It's a nicely sized knife. Um, <clears throat> close length. And again, it's got a lovely deep carry, so it really disappears in the pocket. Coming in at four and a half inches overall. 
And of course, the in-the-pocket profile is fantastic. All right, nice and smooth. Aluminum's not going to scuff up stuff in your pocket. You line it up on there, you're talking about an inch and a quarter at its absolute thickest. It's just a nice, long, lean slicing tool, and they did a great job. Mine came through, you know, from Kershaw through Blue Creek, flawless. Now, I will say, because of the, the aluminum, aluminum does show marks pretty easily. So if it's going to be banging around in a work in a toolbox or a work truck or something, you're going to notice it pretty quick. But for your normal daily carry in a jeans pocket or in a pants pocket, uh, this should hold up for quite a while. At least that's my expectation. Let's do some size comparisons. I'll go ahead and set that up there. He had the bug out out early. Bug out out. <laughs> so here it is against the bug out. As you can see, the iridium is a little bit longer than your stock bug out. <clears throat> at about half price. Um, yeah, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger than a bug out. However, that means that if we put it up against the full-size grip, you're going to see that uh, the grip's just a little bit longer. Um, although, you get a little more cutting area, a little tiny bit more cutting area on the iridium than you do on a full-size grip. Here it is against a... Move that down. PM2. It is obviously smaller than a PM2, which means it's going to be just a little bit bigger than the Para 3, right? It's a really nicely sized knife. Now, because it is aluminum scales, but with steel liners, I'm not really... Let's weigh it out and see what we get. It, it carries light, you know. I mean, it, it feels light in the hand. It's very well balanced, which is nice. It's not always true, and it's not a big deal with me. Um, I have knives that I really enjoy that are terribly balanced. The PM2 being one of them. This thing is a handle-heavy monstrosity, but that just, I don't know, doesn't bother me in that knife. But when it, something that stands out, I feel like I should mention it. All right, let's see where we land. <clears throat> Excuse me. 3.4 ounces for a three and a half inch blade. Um... Yeah, and it's actually below that ounce per inch. Uh, the aluminum scales do make a difference. Now, as I said, there are steel liners on the inside here. Um, they are nested, so you can't see them, but they are. Yeah, I don't have the light for that today, but they are in there. Uh, it does add some strength to the frame and overall du durability to the uh, Axis style lock, their Dura lock. Um, I haven't taken one of these apart, so I don't know what kind of springs they're using, but there's plenty of tension and. Right? Feels good. Let's take a look at how much of that D2 they give you. All right. 2.67 millimeters, so just shy of 3 millimeters of D2. It's not bad. By way of example, the, uh, the heist has a much thinner bit of blade steel coming in at 2.17. So it's a little thicker slice of their D2. You can tell. Like, it's a visual difference when you're holding them up. I have to say, uh, in no with no qualifications, these are my two favorite Kershaws in 20 years. They really are. Um, if you've been thinking about either one of these, just do it. You will not regret it. Now, I do have, um, I have the Covalent... And monitor, I think, um, that you'll be seeing reviews on later. I am considerably less in love with those two for a couple of reasons. But these two, this one's about 50 bucks. This one's 65 um, Now, I know that Kershaw shows the price of this knife at like $140. Ignore that. Kershaw MS, the base Kershaw prices on the Kershaw website are insane and always have been. Vendors are going to have them for considerably less. So this is, I think, $54 or $55, and this is $64.99 on Blade HQ and on Blue Creek and everywhere you can find it. And at $65, bucks, you are not doing too bad. Now, I can hear you. I can get a Sativian in D2, you know, with an access lock for, you know, $27. You can. You can. But if you are like me, and a longtime knife user, and therefore a fan of Kershaw from back in the days when I was buying knives at places like Big Five and Dick's Sporting Goods, then 65 bucks is not that crazy for these materials. 
Uh, I would rather have a Kershaw in these materials than a Sativian. My experience with both is that the Sativians tend to be fat and chunky and sort of blocky, whereas this is definitively a refined cutting tool from a company that's been doing it a really long time. And that is where we're going to wrap it up. This is the Kershaw Iridium. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time.